Welcome back to Any Recapped. Today we will recap the series, The Morose Mononokian. Hope you enjoy. The scene opens with a guy named Hana Ishia who seems to be stuck with a furry ball like a yokai. A few days ago, his mom asked him to shop for some groceries, and on his way back he accidentally stepped on a furry thing that he thought to be a lost stuffed toy. He hangs the toy up so that it will be visible to the owner but little did he know that it will attach itself to him like glue. Since then, the high school life that Hane was so excited to start kept getting delayed because the fur ball drains all of his energy causing him to pass out at the school's front gate. When he comes to, he finds himself in the nurse's office and realizes that school has been over for the day. In the following days, Hane manages to make some progress while the fur ball keeps getting bigger clinging to his back. He feels pathetic about spending all of his high school days in the nurse's office. While trying to get it all, he finds an ad for an exorcist, he decides to take his chance and contact them. To his surprise, a guy picks up and asks him to come out of the nurse's office. Hannah follows his instruction and enters a room that doesn't look like a part of the school. The furball shrinks as soon as Hane steps into the room. The guy introduces himself as Harutsuki Abeno, who is a master of the monologue Hane is sitting in. Hannah then states his real purpose for contacting him, which makes Abeno disappointed. He asks him to wait for a week if he is only here for exorcism, but changes his mind when he hears Hannah's last name. He leads him through a small door that opens on the rooftop. The fur ball suddenly gets enormous, crushing Hannah beneath. Abeno blows a ball and Hane was waiting for him to help him. He ends up cursing him out of anger, but soon gets drowned in his guilt when Abeno tells him that the reason he got possessed is that he could see him. He soothes the giant fur ball and gets him to play with him and the fur ball lets go of Hannah just like that. The real reason why it got attached to him was that he was lonely and Hannah was the first person who could see him. Hannah asks what he could do to help the fur ball, so Abeno asks him to play with the fur ball till he's reduced in size. After five hours, the furball turns small again and Abeno opens a portal to the underworld so the furball could go where he belongs. Even though Hana mistreated it, but he's still sad that the furball is parting from him. They say their goodbyes and the door closes. Now that the job is done, Abeno asks for his payment, which is a million yen. And of course, no high schooler can have that kind of cash. So Abeno makes a deal with Hane to work for him and pay his debt. Finally, Hane can attend school like a normal student, but he is surprised to find that Abeno is in the same class as him. While outside class, another yokai showed up. Abeno and Hane are in the same class, but Abeno spends most of the time sleeping. During the break, Hane spots a yokai and asks Abeno to do something, but he refuses to say that he won't unless someone hires him for it. He warns him to ignore any yokai he sees as well and hands him the money to buy him lunch. In the lunch line, Hane sees a girl collapse on the floor due to her leg going suddenly numb. On looking closely, Hane notices a leaf-like yokai clinging to her leg. Despite Abeno's warning, he went and helped her out, but it turned into a bigger mess when more of that leaf-like yokai came after Hana. He gets to Abeno for help, and after giving him an earful, he calls his Mononokian and drags Hana inside. He tells Hane that these yokai are like ants, and he's only able to open the door twice a day. So to get the boss yokai is the only way for him to get out of this mess. Abeno asks him to stay put while he will go and deal with it, but Hane refuses and asks to help him. They agree on Hana being bait while Abeno will send the boss yokai to the underworld. But things didn't go as planned and they both got caught instantly. When they open their eyes, they face a giant leaf-like yokai who seems to be the father of tiny ones. He asks for help from the master of Mononokian to lead his little ones to the underworld, while he will stay behind. Abeno grants his wish and sends the young ones to the underworld. But somehow the deal did not sit right with Hane, and he argued that boss yokai shouldn't leave his children hanging and lose all hope. After a little persuasion, Abeno comes up with a solution and offers a cure to get rid of the parasitic vines attached to the big boss, but he warns him about the agony that will come with the cure. After the moment of stressful pain, Abeno summons the gate and waits for the yokai to wake up and after a little while, he does. All of his children were waiting for him at the door and didn't go without him. It made the yokai filled with gratitude. He said his thanks and went through the gate. Abeno then appreciates the efforts Hane has put in and passes out right after. Abeno passes out after closing the second gate. He wakes up when Hane shakes him eagerly and clumsily calls him Mononokian. It turns out that the Mononokian is a yokai. He talks to Hana through text and drops him off at his home. At the dinner table, Hane thinks about everything that has happened till now and falls asleep sitting there. Abeno does not show up to class the next day but appears in his Mononokian out of nowhere outside the class and just when Hane thought he was finally making friends. There is a new yokai client, Mitsuchigura, looking for their help and Abeno thinks Hane is the perfect man for the job since it requires crying. 
A laughing mask has gone missing and Hane has to find it. They drop him off at a temple where he meets a girl named Zenko. She's a 15-year-old and looks after the temple. After a few moments, Hane finds out that her father has some issues and can't seem to stop laughing. Hane tries to explain the situation and he knows how hard it is to believe his words, so he asks her to just trust that he's trying to help her. Hana then gets to business and starts reading the book he bought with him, but it's not working anymore, he can't cry. Since what he brought isn't working, he decides to help Zenko to change his environment in hopes that it will have some effect on his tear glands. Zenko is pulling out weeds, but it turns out that they weren't weeds but daffodils, so they plant them back and watered them. At that moment, Hane shared his story of not choosing to be a florist like his mother, since his mother wants him to follow his passion. His words hit Zenko since she always thought that her father didn't want her to succeed in the temple because she's a girl. Hannah's words made her realize that it might not be the case. Zenko tears up out of mixed feelings of relief and happiness, making Hannah fluster and wake up her father. The curse breaks as soon as he sees his daughter's tears and Hane grabs the mask without sparing a moment. Although he meant no wrong, the impression implies that Hane had made Zenko cry and so her father was just about to hit him when Abeno shows up and stops him. They were watching everything from the beginning. He tells Hane to get his stuff so they can leave. Hane thanks Zenko as well as apologizes for making her cry and disappears into the closet. Later, the yokai pays Abeno for the service and warns him to proceed with caution while being with Hana since people like Hana can prove to be dangerous. Hana and Abeno are enjoying a peaceful and normal lunch for once while Hana wonders about how his life would have been normal if he hadn't stepped on that fluffy yokai. Although there were bad days, he still misses him. He asked Abeno if he will ever see him again, to which he added that it might happen during the time he's in debt, but that depends on how quickly he saves up money. The next day, Abeno informs Hana that he will be gone for two days because he is visiting a shop in the underworld. Hana is astonished by the fact that Abeno can enter the underworld. Just then, the Mononokian tells him that he too can go if he wants. But Abeno is against the idea since Hana is a wuss and gets scared easily. Hana insists on going saying that he must learn the ways of the underworld if he has to work for him, so Abeno reluctantly agrees. They decide to meet at the roof on Saturday. On his way there, Hana wonders about why Abeno is going to the underworld and thought that it may be because of those medicines he gave the leaf big boss. When he meets Abeno, he hands Hana a woman's cloak since that's the only thing he had and he can't risk Hana getting possessed again. In addition, Mononokian writes a personal note to him stating all the rules Hana must follow while in the underworld. Before they enter the gate, Abeno adds another rule to the list, to not let anyone know that he is a human or else he will die a painful death. While walking through the creepy tunnel, Hane starts to feel nauseous, but it quickly vanishes the moment he enters the real underworld, which is bright and colorful, not much different from the human world. Abeno leads them to the shop where he meets Kora and her assistant Shizuku, a weird pair with weird hobbies. The medicine they came for is not available at the moment because the leaf big boss has taken Abeno's share, so they decide to help around and wait till the medicine gets ready. While doing the chores, Hane saw a fluff ball passing through, when he saw the trail of blood, he went after it despite Abeno's warning. He manages to catch it, but it turns out that it wasn't the same fluff ball that he knows and it wasn't blood but juice gushing out of the fruit. The fluff ball frees itself and flees, so Hana was on his way back when a capybara stops him and accuses him of stealing his fruit. Hana tries to defend himself, but he did not listen. Then he saw the Mononokin Christ and demands that he hands all of his money to him and everything will be solved. So Hana agrees, but the capybara gets angry to see the change he was offering and tries to slice his arm. Just then, a fluff ball attacks the capybara and saves Hana, and this time it's the same fluff ball that we all know. When Abeno gets back with Shizuku, they realize that Hana is gone. Naturally, Abeno can't leave Hana alone like this, so he goes out to find him. Fuzzy the Fluffball saves Hane, but the capybara was in no mood to back down that easily. Hane tells Fuzzy to run, but he attacks the capybara again instead. This made the situation worse, and capybara threw the Fluffball to the wall, hurting it badly. Something inside Hane breaks when he sees blood coming out of Fuzzy. Terror comes over capybara when Hane threatens him, but before anything else happens, a jar hits Hane from behind, and the thrower was no other than Abeno. He furiously scolds Hane and solves the situation. Everyone at the market was shocked to see the rumored master of the Mononokian, but he paid it no mind. They quickly take Fuzzy to the shop to patch him up. Meanwhile, the legislature calls Kora and finds out that Abeno has a new employee, so he asks Kora to tell Abeno to bring Hana to him to get his approval. Luckily, Fuzzy wasn't as badly injured as he looked, and Shizuku quickly patched him up. After that, he immediately jumps on Hana's shoulder and falls asleep. They decide to keep it until he recovers completely. It was then that Kora informed Abeno about the legislator, and so they went to him right after. 
On their way to Newt Lake where the legislator is, Abeno explains that he is his superior and that he has to obey anything he says or else he will lose his job. Hannah worries about rethinking his life if he ends up firing him, but Abeno assures him that it won't happen. Newt Lake is a beautiful place with a castle covered by a mountain. There, Hane meets Ripau, the legislator. He takes a closer look at Hane and rejects him immediately saying that humans aren't suited for the job. Hannah uselessly tries to hide the fact that he is human and ends up locking horns with Abeno because he so easily gave him away. Afterward, Abeno argues and says that he won't fire Hannah unless it becomes an official rule. Then Ripu asks Hana for his opinion to which he simply says that he can't tell unless he tries, yokai, or not it's the same for him as helping humans. After hearing that Ripu grants Abeno permission to hire him just then, Fuzzy jumps on Ripu's face to make his request to be hired by Abeno, which immediately gets granted as well. Now Abeno and Hane are both able to use the mini door that yokai uses. At the end of the conversation, Ripu apologizes for hiring Fuzzy on his own and says that he now knows that it wasn't the employee he didn't want but Yokai that he didn't want to hire. Along those lines, he ends up pushing some wrong buttons, making Abeno leave in a foul mood. After returning to the Mononoke, Hane apologizes for his recklessness and the trouble he caused breaking the rules. But he also expresses how wonderful it was meeting new Yokai and getting officially hired and reuniting with Fuzzy. Their next job is to find an old wedding ring for an old lady, which doesn't seem like a hard job. The following day, they had a meeting with a new client, but the teacher wouldn't stop babbling, making everyone suffer. Fushi notices the urgency of the situation and speaks up, and a class finally ends. They get to the meeting spot and meet the yokai who possessed the ring of the old lady's husband, Manjiro, who looks like an eel. They immediately get to the job, and Hannah claims that he is especially good at finding metal objects by instinct. Abena was scolding Manjiro for not caring about himself when Hannah miraculously found the ring. Abeno couldn't believe that he did it by instinct. Manjiro overjoys and spirals around Hane, almost suffocating him. Now the only thing left is to deliver it to the old lady. Abeno thinks that it's best not to get involved and just drop the ring in the mailbox, but Hane feels wrong that all the effort of yokai is not being recognized, but he still doesn't want to put the job at risk and decides to follow Abeno's plan. They follow Manjiro to the old lady's house and are about to drop it off when the old lady catches them in action and demands an excuse. Abeno warns Hane and not to say a word and just gets it over with, but he gets reminded of what Hane said earlier and tells the old lady that they are sent by Manjiro. The expression on the old lady's face disappoints Abeno at first, but then the old lady cups Hannah's hands and starts laughing, throwing both Hane and Abeno in confusion. She then explains that Manjiro is her husband who passed away long ago, and that he must have returned as a ghost just to make sure she gets the ring back. The old lady thanks both of them and invites them for dinner. Just then, Abeno hears a strange voice from behind. He confirms it with Hanang, but apparently he is the only one who heard it, and it appears to be some sort of animal whose footprint appears on the wall behind him before vanishing. That's all for this video. Stay tuned to discover what creepy mysterious yokai is looking for Abeno's help next. You have been fantastic. Bye.